Hello, my name is Peter Lupo from Hoplite Communications. I'm here to do a discussion today about federal environmental laws affecting land use. Just an overview. So let me just go over what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about federal environmental laws and regulations affect virtually every aspect of land use in the United States. You'll find it's pervasive. From residential to industrial, from public to private, from development to demolition, you're going to find environmental laws that impact a project. Federal jurisdiction derives from three principal areas, and most of you will be familiar with this, Acts of Congress, the laws and statutes adopted by Congress and signed by the President, regulations promulgated by federal agencies such as the EPA and USDA, and I'm sure everyone here as of today, uh, July 5th was what I'm talking about, um, I'm pr providing this presentation. You're all aware about the most recent Supreme Court decision about the EPA and limiting its ability to regulate, um, so something you should be mindful of. Judicial decisions, such as landmark Supreme Court decisions that have reshaped the environmental land use landscape. I just discussed again a recent EPA case in the Supreme Court. Let me just give you a little bit of a tickler about my first real life exposure to environmental laws. So my most memorable exposure to environmental laws in the real world was during the installation of antennas on a communications tower. So I do telecommunications law. Uh, I also used to build telecommunications towers. And every year, uh, it's an annual, um, annual rate, um, you have um, osprey nests, and uh, it stops construction in many cases. And, and it seems ospreys particularly like um, telecommunications towers on monopoles. They allow places to put their branches uh, and nest, and uh, much to the chagrin of the wireless uh, worker who's got to climb those towers. They're very aggressive birds, uh, and if you try to climb one of these towers, like any other a bird who uh, is nesting, they could get very aggressive and they have big giant talons. So uh, definitely something to be mindful of. But from the environmental standpoint, um, uh, you know, uh, it turns out that you know the protections of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act have a large impact on the construction and upgrade of cellular communications facilities across the country. As the high points of top towers are ideal nesting places for migratory birds, as I just mentioned. Uh, they can't be disturbed between April 1st through August 31st. That's the breeding season. And uh, that was when I got hooked into environmental law from that moment on. I'm kind of a big passion about animals, and, um, and uh, that's where I really got interested in environmental law. So additional federal land use controls uh, on top of the laws, regulations, case laws, there is executive orders, uh, often shaped by political motivations. And you'll see big differences between the way um, President Trump and Pre President Biden approach environmental law. Um, and you see a lot of things that um, President Biden did to uh, countermand the previous administration under under uh, Donald Trump. Uh, licenses and leases to use public lands for various purposes includes ranching and mineral prospecting, exercise of day-to-day -day police powers by federal agencies operating within their statutory jurisdictions. So for example, uh, park rangers on patrol in national parks. And for our purposes, when we refer to land use, we are not referring to campers and national forests, but rather to the basic use of land by commercial residential and industrial landowners and lessees. So the big five federal environmental land use laws. One way to familiarize oneself with federal jurisdiction over various aspects of land use is via an introduction to the major land use legislation enacted by Congress. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, Endangered Species Act, and I kind of alluded to that with the Osprey before, the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, CERCLA. And then there's the National Environmental Policy Act, known as NEPA. So let's dive into the Endangered Species Act. So what is it, what it does? It protects species designated as threatened or endangered to prevent them from going extinct. It does this in part by allowing for the designation of critical habitat that cannot be destroyed or harmed by human activities such as land development. Who does it affect? It develops uh, development areas where endangered species have been identified and protections are in place. Frequent overlaps with state and local regulations. The administration uh, is EPA, is the animals. USDA handles the plants. And Department of Commerce handles marine mammals. It provides stiff penalties for violations, including fines, imprisonment, and potential forfeiture of assets. There are over 200 species that have been protected from going extinct via the act often known as the ESA. So a little ESA update. In 2019, the Trump administration weakened the ESA via the adoption of new regulations. 
These rules make it easier to remove species from the ESA protections. Higher standards to establish causal links between activities and their effect on threatened species. Effect on land use. So it's easier for mining, oil and gas drilling, and ranching operations to take place in areas popped up by endangered species. Now think, uh, fast forward to today in 2022, and you have um, President Biden, who has uh, just increased those protections. Um, they've, he's stopped, for example, the Keystone Pipeline. He's done other things to help strengthen those laws. So you see that big effect. I'm going to introduce Paul. He's also with my practice to give some thoughts about uh, the, the matter and give a little diversity in the field of, on this field of environmental protection.